Hello, thank you uh, for the introduction. And it's a great honor for me to have a chance to give a talk in this memorable flagship symposium. My name is Yasuaki Kagehi. Uh, today, I'm participants from Tokyo, Japan, but uh, I hope I, I could visit in London next time to celebrate the start of the Institute and also this symposium. In my talk, I'd like to introduce my research and works in relation to creative robotics, the topic of this symposium, and under the title of Art, Craft, and Engineering through Material Interactions. First of all, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm working at the University of Tokyo as a full professor in an interfaculty initiative in information studies. It's an interdisciplinary research-based uh, graduate school. It is difficult to define my specialty as I am conducting research in an interdisciplinary area, but I'm mainly working in the area of human-computer interaction. And my original background is electronic information studies, engineering side. I have also worked as a media artist for more than 20 years. For example, I have presented my works at Ars Electronica for 10 consecutive uh, years. And as for the lab members uh, in my group, also come from diverse backgrounds. For example, measuring in art, design, engineering, uh, architecture or anthropology kind of thing. So I think the atmosphere of my group is similar with the CCI. Okay, so today I present our research project as much as possible, but since the time is limited, if you are interested in the uh, and want to look into the details, please find and access our web lab website. So the first project I'd like to show you is a piece called Air on Air. This may be a bit weakly related to this main topic, but I'd like to introduce it as an idea to overcome the remote communication that we have today. So this is a piece we created two years ago uh, for the Ars Electronica Festival 2020. And it was a hybrid exhibit that, due, due to the COVID-19, uh, it was a hybrid exhibit that connected local in Linz in Austria and online during the festival. We took place where many people, including me, around the world were unable to travel to Austria for, due to the COVID-19. So we came up with these ideas. So I'd like to show the video. Briefly, what we did was create a bubble machine that could be activated remotely via the internet. As you see in the video, the visitor could physically send bubbles to a remote location by blowing into the microphone on a smartphone or PC. In a festival, we set the six bubble machines uh, three in Linz, Austria, and three in Tokyo, Japan, so that the audience can access to the bubble machines from all, the, all over the world via the internet. Yeah, as you see this video, the screen is set up to see the scenery on the other side, and the, we can feel as if we our breath has reached the other side of the world. With Zoom, as we experienced it now, we can visually see the scenery of the remote place, but we cannot feel the invisible presence of air or wind over there. So that's why we use the actual bubble to feel the existence of the wind or air through the behavior of the actual bubbles floating in the air. And also physical soap bubbles attract the attention of people walking by or sometimes prompt them to take action to, to the bubbles. So that, how to say, characteristic is also very useful for realizing these interactions. So I'd like to share these experiences. This happened to me during the festival when I accessed the links through the screen. When I experienced this installation by myself, Someone I did not know reached out 
their hands in front of the device. And somehow we played together via the screen, through the screen. And I felt as if I was in the festival venue since we actually we could, how to say, make the interaction with the audience in the local venue. So I also felt the power of the material interactions also through this uh, installation. So let me go to the next project. So next, I'd like to introduce uh, another research that is a little closer to the topic of robotics. But unlike the solid robots we are used to seeing, however, we are working with liquid. So let me play the video again. This is Koro. Koro is a traditional town, but which was exhibited at the Arts Electronica Center 2019, and it's now in the permanent collection on the Panasonic Creative Museum in Tokyo. It focuses on the Weissenberg effect of a new non-Newtonian fluid to control the rise of the surface. As you see, the, the liquid can behave in a very neat pixel-like manner. But sometimes it behaves in a way that emphasizes the materiality of the liquid in a more wild way. So technically, the liquid contains a disk controlled by the mechanical motors underneath. And the shape and the size of this rise can be controlled by the direction and speed of its ro the rotation of the motors. Without any control, it's just a liquid. So with a very smooth and flat surface. And sometimes the, the lights combine each other to make much larger lights on the surface. So uh, like as a display, we can control the liquid. And also, the, we can also see the, the characteristic of, how to say, wild characteristic of the liquid through the installations. So it's a kind of in between the material and the digital, physical and digital. So that's what we want to explore through this project. And also, it can go back to the liquid. So. I'm thinking not, uh, not only about how to create form in this project, but also how to lose or regain forms through the liquid in interaction. So you can see some photos of the installations. If you have a chance to come to Tokyo, please drop by the Panasonic Creative Museum to see this permanent collection. And the next project I will show you is also different in context, but this is also a device that enables the cycle of things instantly taking shape and return to material again. It is a result of a joint research project between my lab and also team from the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, the project began with how to say, insights and also the speculation into the future of ultra-fast digital fabrication. What if 3D printers could print a physical object in seconds? So that is a question we had through the, this project. Many of today's audience maybe are already familiar with digital fabrication, including 3D printers. 3D printers are useful tools for rapid prototyping, but they still take on the order of hours to create a three-dimensional object. But if we consider these fabrication machines as computer output interface in the same way as the monitors or speakers. 
we also uh, would like to aim for the future in which shapes are also output in as much real time and interactively as possible. So let me show the video of this device. This project, which we call DynaBlock, is a prototype that aims to create a three-dimensional object in a few seconds. Like Coro, the this device also contains a bunch of actuators underneath of the stage. And on top of the actuators, there are blocks, as you see in the video. And by pushing the blocks up off the stage at programmed timing, various 3D shapes can be configured in seconds. And each block has a magnet on each side, and when placed close together, they stick to each other. So, so they can form the three-dimensional object. Unlike other how say, shape displays, this system is unique in its ability to create three-dimensional shapes, such as arches, roofs, planes, and internal st structures. Furthermore, the user can push the object. Uh, back into the block again by pushing it into the stage where it can be used as material to output other different shape of the object. So here's the detail of the block. There are magnets attached to each, each side and it's, uh, each of which can be dynamically connected when it's pushed, pushed up. And also this is the step-by-step -step illustration of how the block is pushed up and down. By pushing up, it can form three-dimensional object here on the stage. And by pushing it back to the stage, it can be reversed as a, how do you say, the blocks. So it can be, go, it can go back to the materials again. So we can reuse it to, for another object. So, this research is still underway for a wide range of applications, including educational ways or entertainment or modeling support or communication kind of thing. So application is not limited. So yeah, we are still working on this project. So here I would like to share a little about how I came to these creations. As I mentioned at the beginning, I studied electronic information studies as an undergrad. I was in a lab that did research on virtual reality, augmented reality, or three-dimensional displays in particular. There, first I developed that a uh, system, interactive system that used projector, projection to augment physical uh, spaces and augment the, the human actions by projecting images onto the space. So let me show the video of that. So later, the technology that I developed. So this is very old piece, 2002. Uh, that's what I created when I just graduated the undergrad. So, so after that, the technology caught the attention of the artists, media artists. That's when I met media artists at the time. And I had the opportunity to exhibit it as a work of interactive art at the museum. When I exhibited the technology, this piece at the museum as an art piece with a collaboration with the media artist, the way people experienced it was completely different from the way I presented uh, this my research on the tech engineering field. So I never forget what I saw and experienced at the museum. So yeah, basically, this is very simple. The, according to the walk, walking path, the projection image can be changed. And, oh, so. and also, the, by 
crossing each other. So various type of animation happens here. But when I showed this piece at the museum, I thought many people how to say got excited and found their way to experience this piece. It was not what I expected, but uh, I strongly noticed that we don't need to design everything for the interactions, but we should keep rooms so that the people can find or think or make the way to use that new media. So that's what I learned from the first creation. After that, uh, I also keep creation based on projection mapping technologies, especially for the tangible interface, tangible interfaces, and also spatial displays. The advantage of using projector is we cannot, we don't need to wear anything to experience the interaction, and also we can use the existing other objects like paper, leaves, our hands, bodies, as an interface. So I like that aspect of the projection uh, approach. But gradually, my in research interests move on to the object itself, more to say the material itself. So how we can design the object, how we can design the, the change of the behaviors, Not just using the visible light projection, but also using other types of te techniques, how we can control the behaviors or property of physical object became a core research interest over the last decade or so. So in addition to the visible light projection approach, we have been studying interfaces that change the color, movement, size, or softness of object by locally projecting magnetic power, ultrasonic sound, thermal, or vibration forces onto real object. I will pick up some of them later. But this is a digest video of our recent works. Actually, there is no projection anymore on this video. But same as the pre projection has approach, the physical object material can change its appearance or interact with the users. So our current technical research interests include display technologies, materials, digital fabrication, electronic uh, circuits, power supplies, including power uh, energy harvesting. So it's widely how to say, expanded. In addition to that technological exploration, I'm, we are also exploring the interaction design and application design for these new technologies, including artistic expressions. Let me show uh, some of our recent project related to the robotics as time permits. In areas related to robotics, we have been working on a soft deformation sensor that can be 3D printed and also a soft actuator that encapsulates soft sensors in it. This project is called Morpheo. As you see the video, this actuator provides users an opportunity for programming by demonstration by their hands. That means by how to say the operating the object by hands, it becomes a kind of input for the actuators. 
So without any, using any programming on screen, we can, how to say, input the behaviors to this soft robot. In this project, we designed a special soft sensor made of porous material. Recently, we made it 3D printable. And by using the special sensor included inside, it can sense the deformation. Even while it is made of totally soft materials, so there's no hard component inside of the actuators. So in this application, the user can control the behavior of the robot by hands. It can record the movement and then replay it, kind of thing. So, another robot. Related project I want to show here is the Luciola. This is the demonstration of, uh, I think, the tiniest drone, let's say drone, a four millimeter LED that glows and flies around in the air. This is realized by combining wireless power transmitting te technology and ultrasonic levitation technologies. This is what the device, the particle, looks like. As you see, the particle can fly around without any wires. It can be levitating by itself in three-dimensional space. And it can also emit light by receiving energy from the coil. Like the drones, the, we can also the very compact size of the tiny levitating pixels with a tangible particle. This is also a joint project with Professor Takamiya's lab and Professor Kawahara's work at lab at the University of Tokyo. So the next challenge in our research is how to connect this research or this, how to say, new interactive materials that behave interactively uh, to the field of applications. So what kind of application can be possible is, uh, how to say, the, another challenge in our research. And we are working on scenarios, prototyping to apply these te technologies in various contexts, such as fabrications, mobility, inflatable mobility, or shape-changing food, or shape-changing architecture, kind of thing. So with, with some how say, research partners that we are working to make it uh, be deployed in a not just practical way, but uh, we, are, we are exploring the application of these interactive materials. Among these application exploring, uh, lastly, I'd like to highlight is the development of new functional textiles in collaboration with uh, Japanese traditional crafts. This is a joint research project uh, with Hoso Inc. Japanese craft company. And it's also next, that is the fashion tech company based in uh, Tokyo, Japan. And by incorporating new functional materials into the, the materials and the conventional, traditional materials or manufacturing methods and the design of Nishijin textile. Nishijin textile is one of the most famous uh, Japan's representative traditional craft and we are developing textile that dynamically change its uh, properties like color, stiffness, 
as well as textiles that glow, that glow, emit lights, or change its transparency. So we embed new function, functions, functionalities into the traditional uh, textile craft. More concretely, by inserting or printing functional materials like thermochromic ink or uh, electroluminescent film on, on the weft threads, we have implemented these functions. Researchers, craftsmen, curators, or business product producers are working together on prototyping to see how they can update the traditional manufacturing method and design the chip while taking their advantage. So let me show some photos, images of the, the textile we developed. So this is a color changing textile. It takes uh, hours to change its color patterns, but gradually it, it becomes how this color and it can be, go back to the white textile. And this is light emitting uh, Nishijin weaving craft. So this is also a transparency changing uh, Nishijin weaving. Still, we are working uh, with the collaborators to update or explore further, how to say, possibilities to update the traditional craft with the skills or technologies of material interactions. Okay, finally, I'd like to how this uh, give the the few comment. To, about the future of these studies. Our research is strongly influenced by Mark Weiser's calm computing concept. It is a vision in which we are not usually aware of the presence of the computers, but they exist and work for us when we need them. Uh, how to say that the most profound technologies that those that disappear is a very famous. Uh, words. But in our team, in our research team, this is also includes the other my collaborators. But uh, we are trying to extend this idea to physical interfaces field as well. In our research project, we call it conv convivial technology, which is an how to say uh, that not only quietly watches over us, like sensors also actively works with us at the time to uh, by changing its behaviors or moving around so how we can uh, put the, the more active capabilities onto the artifact is a topic we are interested in and finally i'd like to play this video <laughs> This video is created by the team of Takram. Takram is also our research partner, design firm. And they created this video for presenting the future of our visions, including the current ongoing project. But many of these visions have yet to be realized. But you can see most of the artifacts move around, change its behaviors, interact with humans, interact with surroundings. How we can make the convivial, appropriate relation in between the artifacts, humans, or surroundings, including the nature, we hope to continue our research toward the world in such a how to say, say con new conditions. Okay, that's what I want to show today. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>